Welcome back to this week in agribusiness. One stop we wanted to make here at the Farm Progress Show at Boone was at Big Iron. And here he is, Mr. Big Iron himself, Mark Stott. Well, well, wait just a minute here. I'm, I'm looking at a Big Iron shirt and a Sullivan Auctioneer's cap. Yes, uh, uh, earlier this uh, past month, you know, we made the announcement of the partnership between Big Iron and the Sullivan Auctioneer Group out of Illinois. So we're very excited to have a, another quality group of salesmen and women and support staff now giving the sellers and bidders and buyers across the country the best of both of us. Mark, that seems like a win-win all the way around. Really a reputable uh, firm, well-known, highly respected folks. Uh, very well-known, and uh, they do an outstanding job with their customer service side of the business, as does the Big Iron folks. So uh, it's a marriage that was mirrored. Uh, you know, they look at each other, and we're very similar in, in process and in the way we treat the sellers and the bidders and the buyers. So a uh, very smooth transition. We're excited about all the auctions that are coming forth here over the next couple of months and into 2023. We keep watching these reports on land values, expecting them to really not only plateau, but maybe taper off some. What are you experiencing? What are you seeing? Well, as of right now, we have seen maybe a leveling off, unless you have one of those rare, fine, top producing soils, then, you know, Katie, bar the door because they're all coming. Uh, but, uh, you know, with interest rates, eventually that does have a little bit of an impact. But the majority of the land sales we have right now, Max, uh, a lot of the folks are still coming to the dance with cash. So they're not borrowing money, so that interest rate really isn't affecting them. But it does affect the young folks that want to try to expand their operation. And, uh, you know, but there's a lot of opportunity out there, and there's different things here and there and everywhere that uh, bidders and buyers can jump into uh, at the time arises. But the thing about the Big Iron and uh, Sullivan websites, there's a lot of land being moved right now. There's a large population of folks that have hit that baby boomer age and they may have passed away and they've turned it over to their family. Uh, and those family members are, some of them are cashing out. So there's just a lot of land available. What's the buyer profile, the typical buyer profile? What percentage are, are actually farmers? Uh, they're still, the majority of them are still farmers, uh, but they're coming up creeping fast with those folks that have the 401k money coming out at age 59 and a half and they have no confidence in the stock market. So they're rolling their money into something they can see and touch and uh, watch appreciate over time. Some of the exchanges, 1031 exchanges still going on, even for people selling out of businesses that aren't agriculture. Well, correct? that's actually happening for the family members that have a partnership of three or four family members and they sell what they own together. And then some of them are rolling that money into buying something for their own family to start their own legacy and pass on to their children. What is a real important attribute other than the soil type when uh, these folks are looking to buy a farmland. Let's say it's somebody outside of agriculture, they're coming in, drainage is still crucial, is it not? Uh, it's very crucial, but location, location, and location max is still very important. A lot of people are buying in an area where they grew up at mm -hmm. because they know the family that they'll rent it to if they're not an actual end user farmer. So uh, the location where it's at is still uh, sentimental and dear to a lot of people. Uh, they recognize the names on the plat map. They remember their grandpas and their dads and their aunts, you know, talking and going to play cards and going to the ball games on Saturday night. So they go back to their roots when they want to add land to their operations. And that's fun to watch see happen. I can imagine it is. Do you also find folks who say, I want to go out and visit this piece of this uh, piece of the planet that I own. I want to go out and hunt it and fish it and, and to take my family out there. Yeah, the hunting is extremely important. But remember, the people that like to go hunting, they also want to return on their investment. So if there's a nice uh, a patch of land that's got some good cropland with income producing potential, and they still have them four or five or 10 acres of trees along a tree line where they can go get that 30 point buck, they're all in. What do you say to somebody who says, yeah, you know, maybe I could uh, buy this land, get a quick appreciation on it, sell it, resell it again soon, not far down the road. That's not so likely, is it? Uh, you know, the land is usually a long-term investment, uh, so to speak. Uh, it's it's kind of something that you look at over a longer period of time. And uh, yeah, there's an opportunity, I suppose, if you're at the right place at the right time and you get something bought privately where you might take advantage of an opportunity to flip it, so like a house, uh, so to speak. But we're talking a lot bigger dollars, so a lot of times that doesn't happen every day. What do you say to someone who says, you know, we've watched this movie over the years. We've we've seen the values climb substantially and then we've seen them pull back. Are we, we primed to see some kind of retracement here, Mark, from your experience? Well, the economist always says that happens. And yes, we have seen that happen. You know, we've seen it coming out of the 2008 and 9 year when everything kind of backed all back down and 
then people were just waiting. Uh, and there wasn't a lot of land that gets sold once the price retraces either. But I think it's a little different now because we got the large population of baby boomers that are exiting agriculture and maybe they want to sell that farm and divvy up cash instead of divvying up farmland because you know, we could talk all day long about the other subject is when somebody passes away and they give it to the kids and if it's not done quite right, now the kids usually don't even talk to each other anymore. That's a whole nother conversation for another three hour TV program. But uh, right now, the land that's being uh, on the market, being sold, is, uh, is something that everybody's looking for because of the availability and the time that's taking place right now. So for the hand ringers that are worried about a bubble, a bubble that has formed here, perhaps uh, uh, exploding at some point. You're not so concerned about that right uh, now. Never say never, but uh, the, the possibility exists. If we go up another percent, percent and a half on interest right. rates, that's obviously going to cure a lot of enthusiasm. That will make a difference, won't it? It will make a, a difference. In many markets, not just land. Correct. We'll see that in machinery. We'll see that in land. We'll see that in a lot of things if that comes into play, and they're talking like it might. We sure appreciate the chance to visit with you all the time, sir. Thank you and your contributions each week, giving us a feel for what's happening in the market on This Week in Agribusiness. Hey, glad to do it, Max. Thank you. Take care. Mark Stock, Big Iron, and Sullivan. You, you know both of those names, and they're in uh, partnership together now, by all means. You'll hear more about them in the future, to be sure. There's more coming up on This Weekend's This Week in Agribusiness.